Hey everybody, welcome back from last week and my absence. Um, although I've been up to speed on what's been going on, I haven't had a chance to completely review the new um, the training from last week with Maggie, but your comments are telling me a lot about how good it was and the little bit that I did catch. Um, it's great to have that resource. I'm almost inclined, Maggie, to maybe redo that training if you want to maybe review it again and see what you have and then what we can do is we can do a proper recording of it on on uh, the zoom platform so maybe we can save it for next week and we, we do a repeat because I'd like to be in on that conversation I'd still like you to host it um, and, and again just review things uh, like the tools and, and your applications and some of the things that you were also talking about your CRM systems etc so I think that'd be a really worthwhile call to repeat um, because the tools are fresh and they are so important and I can also give you some commentary as well with respect to um, my perspective on on the, the tools for why we chose them. Um, again, welcome everybody, welcome back. Um, I know you guys have been busy, so I'm just gonna take the take this first segment, if I may, just give you a, the floor. I'm, I wanna do a little bit of Q&A so you know, uh, just so that you have a chance to maybe ask me some questions about stuff that's on your mind and sharing the dialogue, everyone can share the dialogue. I wanna give you some insights from my experience over the last 10 days in Latin America, uh, which also included a pretty cool one day excursion to Machu Picchu. So <laughs> if, if I seem a little freaked out, a little bit weirdo, that's probably because I was into the pretty high altitude over there. So um, <laughs> it, it was really cool. Anyway, um, so let's just go ahead and open the floor for a little bit of insights from this past week, especially in lieu of the fact that you did get a call, a great training call with Maggie on the application of these tools. And so what, since Orlando, because Orlando is a pivoting point, and, um, and I'm starting to see the results of that in, reflected in the requests for flyers and the events that are now being hosted. You guys are really stepping it up and taking responsibility for hosting your own events and initiating the activity to, to create those events. So I think that's really important. Uh, that's a really important thing to do. I'm being told my internet connection is unstable. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and um, open the floor to some uh, bite sound bites of what you've experienced since Orlando, since the call last week where Maggie zoomed in on some of the tools. In terms of practical application, what's happening in your business that's progressive, that's causing you to, what you're seeing in terms of progression? Because we, we want to see where the movement is taking place and see if we can en enhance that. Anyone, please feel free to jump in. Well, this is Carol. And um, what happened to me was I, I did get a lot bolder. And I um, really started talking to people, and I, I got back actually home, and I've been traveling a lot. And uh, I have um, uh, positive responses. No, uh, I guess I have one new customer, but I also have a, a probably um, one consultant, and I met with. Um, uh, Gary Bolton and I went to um, Molly Simpson's home presentation, which has been fantastic. And Tony Collins met with us. So what I have is a lot of energy and a lot of. Um, I guess I'm just easy in terms of talking about Nikan and um, doing demonstrations and um, a lot of uh, strength. And confidence. Since okay, confidence. Okay. I mean, great. Um, this new person that you just enrolled, you said you sponsored a new consultant. Are they a consultant or a partner? Do you know the difference? Okay, that yeah. pause tells me enough. <laughs> that very long pause. <laughs> No, no, your 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 sound went out. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so what's... no, I do know the difference. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, the the one person who is um, 
today what we've been trying to contact is a physician. She's been um, resistant about our water until um, I stayed with her and took um, Gary's suggestion and tested her with her water and tested her with our water and she was stronger with our water. Anyway, she wants to sell the, she wants the waterfall and she wants to sell them now. So uh, that, so she will be a partner in that regard, although she's not going to be somebody, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. Okay. Out. Pause right there. That is not a definition of a partner. Um, we need to be very, very clear about that so that our language is the same going forward when we, when we speak the idea of what a partner is, um, which is somebody who's prepared to make the commitment of launching their business in a 90 day launch. And that means they're going to be, you know, engaging in one of these programs, which is entrepreneurs club or something, because we're not seeing the traction that we need to see among this group where that's concerned, at least not to this point. So it has to be very clear what we're setting up as expectations, both for ourselves and the people that we're enrolling. Because I find that what's happened to the network, it's become very gun shy about enrollment and gun shy about asking for an investment and gun shy about getting the list and gun shy about, you know, basically taking the bull by the horn. And, and so we've had more than enough time to get comfortable and confident. Now we need to get into productivity versus just activity. So things that are performing at a level of expectation that marry, that align our expectations with our actions um, and, and the things and the commitments that people are making around that. So given that this call is really about aligning with success, my goal for this call, especially tonight, is to, to reacquaint us with what's that center line that we're moving toward so that we're, we're always focused on that center line and drawing to ourselves those people and those circumstances that are in alignment with that. So hold that thought. Anyone else? Jump in and, and forgive me if I jump in as well, by the way, because it's really a learning opportunity for me to take advantage of this, the, because I was talking to Maggie before we got started language. I'm very, I'm very careful with language and I'm listening carefully with the language that I'm hearing on calls and interactions with, with downline to, to know, to note whether or not they're really applying the law of attraction um, versus knowing about the law of attraction. The application of it is the key. Now, Maggie, you're going to jump in. Yeah, I was just going to talk about the law of attraction, actually, Michael, because the, the couple that is um, coming by on Wednesday to sign up as consultants, and I see them as, as partners once they understand the plan. Um, I, I was at a networking event, which was a social, and my intention has been for a while to attract someone who is connected to South America, to Latin America. So there was a woman there, and I introduced myself, asked her where she was from, she's from Colombia. And uh, I, I said, you know, I would love to have coffee with you because I think I might be able to help you. She's a lawyer. My son's a lawyer. We can do some connecting there. And, you know, I'm looking for a way to attract business partners in your country. She said, oh, that's part of what I do because I can't practice as a lawyer here in Canada. So anyway, we had coffee with my son and just developed a really great relationship. And one of the things that I found really interesting was she complimented me on the fact that my son hugged me when he arrived at the coffee shop in a public place and he's a pretty shy guy and he hugged me when he left she said that's what we do in in latin america that was just so refreshing because they've lived in canada for about 15 years and she said i just don't see that very much so that was mm. that was a real heart connection and then you know as as the universe would have it um i came back the same day that mary robson and I had arranged a, um, a monthly event at her place and the guest speakers were Randy Rolfe and John Rolfe who were both lawyers. So I invited my friend, she said, we'd love to come. And I picked them up at their home. So I had that 45 minutes of the drive to continue that relationshiping and to find out a little bit more about, you know, what makes them tick, what they're looking for. So at the end of all that, um, when I dropped them off, I said, you know, this is what I recommend for the next step. Are you open to that? And they said, absolutely. So they're coming on Wednesday to have a more of an in-depth of the business. They've got the, 
the overview, but they don't have the, the nuts and bolts. So I'm so grateful for the tools, Michael, that you have given us. Even though I don't have my packet, I have that one precious package that I got when we registered in, uh, in Orlando. Well, the, the delay, by the way, in that may have been uh, because we had tripped up on one of the flyers that we needed to make some corrections and that took a little bit of time turning around, especially in my absence. So I know that my package was shipped out today. So I assume if they got mine out, that means pretty much everybody's is probably on, on route as of today. I received mine today and they're beautiful, Michael. Okay. All right. Okay. Excellent. In fact, we're going to be translating them in Spanish as well. Uh, requests from the Latin American group. Thanks Maggie for that. Um, Okay, uh, anyone else? Michael. Uh, we had um, the, our area regional with planning so that we could come up with the weekly and the monthly and the bigger meetings, having that come up. And it was, the whole of that conversation was much nicer. I, I, Elaine Matthews is on here. I think he, Elaine Connolly wasn't on, but um, just the collaboration of the planning that are coming up, we felt very good about and conversations are different converse we've been helping one another the thursday night meeting with uh, that i host with our co-host with michelle has led to other alliances and people helping one another with abcs that are coming up so the increased number of abcs that has been able to help each of us and and make new alliances is increasing and uh, the sharing of all of that is increasing. So that's really helping. So we have planned for this Thursday evening. There was a bigger, biggest enrollment that we had last week. We have more this week. We're gonna, Michelle's gonna actually do a live program from her house. I'll do it and we're bringing Randy in as a guest. Now, prior to this meeting tonight on Stan's mentoring call. Hang on a second, Madeline. Okay. We just got a bit of feedback. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and then? in relation to those conversations and feeling more comfortable, uh, not only just feeling more comfortable, but executing that in action and getting a different response. We had Peter Gibson as a guest on Stan's mentoring call and several people here came from that call onto this one. Uh, and he talked about some things that he's learned, which I did uh, record it and I'll forward it on. And it, it was really very helpful. To me, it's a different way. Um, Maggie maybe could speak up as well since she's worked with you longer than I have, but a different way of feeling and, and um, implementing the law of attraction in our conversations and our posturing and our positioning. It was very helpful to hear that from Peter tonight. I just feel like in me personally, um, that it's just a different internal feeling and I find myself relating differently. So I have three prospects in process with a flow feeling much better, new prospects, mm -hmm. as a result of those kinds of conversations and connecting into those three ways. The most recent was a young man that came into the house today and I feel very good about that conversation. So I just, I'm feeling better and I know the people that I've been connecting to um, in helping one another. Um, Tyra is one here, Tyra Andrews. Maggie has been very helpful. So I appreciate what's been happening. And one of the things I said to Peter, because he made an observation from being involved before and coming back again now, and is some of it related to the external economy and consciousness raising with his young Drew that he's working with. And I think that's certainly a part of it. But I think what we have been doing with all of this it takes a while for that cultural change and the changes in our conversations and behaviors to occur. And, and to, in support of Carol, when she, she didn't even know Peter was her upline. So she called me to ask me a question when she was in Atlanta and she's even looking for a house for her mother. So I connected her to Peter and it ended up being very positive for Carol, both as her upline and mm -hmm. also for the others and you know just just this is what i mean about the um it's like every day there's different phone calls that are connecting and really truly supporting one another a network you know we say do and we say just like you've said before but teach three to reach three well we say this stuff how do you do it and and the, this relationship piece is critical and i feel that has changed okay um, 
Okay. So, um, well, obviously this connection to one another, um, this is kind of unique, by the way. It really is uncommon to find network marketing organizations cross line collaborating the way we are. It's just not common. Um, and and when, when I'm looking in Latin America, actually one of the influences that this is having is they're, uh, they're seeing this. They're, they're observing our cross line collaboration. Um, they are incredibly strong team workers. They're, everything they do is team. Everything is ABC. ABC is at the center uh, and the heart of how they operate, which is, uh, we all know this. There, you're, there's a direct correlation to the number of ABCs and the growth of your business. So th very, very important. We've got one more, and then I'll, then I'll take over from there. One more comment. Thanks, Madeline. Something that, that you're observing since October or since uh, Orlando and, and uh, the activation of these tools, et cetera. Anything that's different for you? Progressive. Can you move that to me? Anyone? Lori, did you want to speak? Yeah, I did. Um, I'm just seeing that the genuineness that the leaders showed it kind of gives me courage to be real, more real than I normally am when I'm sharing. And my sister, I've noticed when Suzanne gets online, she'll more aptly share her story more than she used to. So I, I just feel like when we're, we're real with people, that's when, that's exactly what Peter just said as well. That's when people can really see who you are and that this business is very different from any other business. Great and, um, point. You know, the tears in y'all's eyes, you know, I was in a long time ago, but it just grabbed a hold of me even more to see everyone be very real and very transparent. So I Lord, really appreciate that. Thanks, Lori. That's a really important point. Um, when it comes to distinguishing <laughs> ourselves bless you when it comes to distinct distinguishing ourselves in the in the field of network marketing at large but even more than that um, if you just look at the situation that's currently happening in the news 24 7 we're constantly being reminded of how unbelievably brash and artificial and superficial are the elected representatives of our, our nations uh, who are making judgment calls that could affect everyone's life. And so this is sort of a reflection, I think, uh, of the situation at large. Um, and and th this may be really good for us because it's the bubble bursting, I think, too. When it's so obtuse and so in your face, it's just impossible to ignore. And so um, when we come along and we are demonstrating our vulnerability and our, our sincerity, then that's when people sense something is different about who you are and what you're involved in. It, it speaks to what you're involved in. If you can be that honest and that transparent, it says a lot about the, the, the tree. You know, you're the fruit and it says a lot about the tree. So a uh, huge, huge point. Um, and, and, and that's one of the reasons why, by the way, the ABCs are so effective because then when they see another person like that, that it's not just you, it's not just your personality, it's simply a, a demonstration of an expression of the, the tree. You know, that we're all coming from this, we're all a product of the environment that we're a part of, and that's what this environment has created, a level of integrity and, and sincerity that is so rare uh, for people to connect to and, and people d d really desire that there's a real need for it well um, thanks for your input everybody good points here so talking about increase in a ABCs we're talking about a lot of trash and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in terms of languaging how to be clear about who you're attracting what you're attracting um, based on the tools that we've just you know put out there the idea that a partner is not just somebody who signs up it's not just somebody who's selling some product, that's a consultant. A partner is somebody who's clearly defined as someone who has, is investing their time, money, and contacts to execute a 90-day launch, which leads to, as a consequence, some of these incentives, uh, beginning with the very first one, which is the Entrepreneurs Club. So the idea that we start to make this a habit, the idea that 
all of us begin to have an expectation in the people that we're enrolling that um, the day of being timid about that, let's say the last 18 months, is over. We don't have to be shy about it. We don't have to be timid about it because we kind of like who we are. Don't you agree? We like who we are. We like what we stand for. We like what we represent. And there's nothing to be shy about. Um, there's every reason to be proud about what that is and to be clear with people that um, we know better. We have a, a way of getting things going, and it's a good way. There's nothing wrong with making your recommendation as to how they should get started. I'm very clear about that for myself and the people that I'm working with. So I, I suggest that. And, and by the way, these tools are now, as, as Maggie pointed out on the call, these tools give us the ability to duplicate that language, to the ability to um, define and discuss what the process is, what the expectations are. So it, it gives us a measure of accountability and a, a standardization in terms of expectation. That's really why these tools are out there. Tools give us the ability to duplicate not just behavior, but expectation and language. Let me touch on language for a second here. When it comes to the law of attraction, um, be careful when you're speaking about yourself or your situation or your expectations. If you're not speaking from the perspective of the person who has already achieved everything, then you're not invoking the law. So it's really important that you hear what you're saying or what other people are saying. Um, are they speaking in first person as if they already are that person? Or are they still speaking from future tense? Are you still speaking future tense? That's really, really important because that in fact is a contradiction. And so what that does is it's the same metaphor that I use, planting the seed and then digging up the seed to see if it's still there. If you're speaking in terms of a person who is expecting the future, not living it, then you're contradicting the law. So become very keen and aware of the, the choice of your words and the perspective that you're coming from when you speak. Speak as if you already have, as, you, as if you already are that individual who has obtained the, the desired outcome. And as you start to do that and become more conscious of it, what you are actually doing is applying the law. The law is when you become conscious of that being, you in fact become that being. That's how it works. It doesn't work any other way. There's no shortcuts to this. It's really straightforward. As you embrace and embody in mind, body, consciousness, feeling, the person you are expecting to experience yourself as, then you are in fact drawing it to you. If you're not speaking in first person, if you're not speaking as if you're already that person, if you're not emotionally connected to the feeling of what it looks like and feels like, and by the way, the best way to do this, to really, to really embrace this idea, I did this exercise in the Law of Attraction presentation the other night in Peru. I got people to feel what it felt like to be that person. So I just got them to close their eyes and I want you to go in there and I really want you to go in there after we imagined a pink elephant in a room, right? You know how we can do that. So I said, okay, you're, you're capable of doing stuff that, you know, imagining something that's never been seen by a human being and you, you can do it. So now let's imagine a version of you and that version that you want to see of you in five years from now. And now I want you to get connected to it on an emotional level. What does it feel like to be that person right now? And I gave enough time for them to draw into that. That's the key. The key is you will know how it feels when you feel it. And that feeling is incredibly satisfying. And, and, and so we're not getting into the feeling enough because if you're in the feeling, you start to speak the language of that feeling. You start to speak the language of that person from that point of view. So that's my little golden nugget for tonight with respect to the law of attraction. Be aware of your language. Can I ask Are, a Yes, go ahead, Madeline. Because uh, Peter was just talking, you know, the, the language, I think you're saying thing, but if you could clarify, he was talking about being in the flow and our posture and positioning and our presence. 
So can those three terms, posture, position, and presence, Yep. that's what you're describing. I'm, that's, that's what I'm totally describing. Now, I'll give you an example of this, and forgive me for those of you who may not quite understand what I'm trying to say, but let me just do it anyway. Um, Jesus was accused of being um, a heretic or um, blasphemy. He was accused of blasphemy when he spoke, I and the Father are one. Now, if you were in, in the physical body that you're in right now, but somehow by whatever act of the divine, you were now one and the same as the Father. You're in consciousness. Your consciousness was now expanded to a unification with the consciousness of the mind of God. So now there you are, not aware of yourself as who you are on this video screen, but aware of yourself as, in fact, the creator of all things. So if in, in one instant, all of a sudden, you are consciously that being, even though you're in a physical body, what would you say? What would you speak? You would speak as if you were that person, that, that consciousness, that idea. You would speak in the first person. And so to say something like, I and the Father are one, would be completely normal if you were, in fact, in that consciousness. So, so what we're talking about is the words that you would use, the expression of who you would be expressing, what's coming out of you on an emotional level, and the words, the choice of words, and your posture would be completely tied to who you are conscious of being. Are you conscious of being somebody who's struggling, or are you conscious of being somebody who's building an empire? Are you conscious of being somebody who is building a doghouse? Are you conscious of being somebody who's building a skyscraper? Who are you conscious of being when you're going around, going out and talking to people? Because it's in that expression of yourself and that awareness of self is where all the words are coming from, is, is the posturing and so forth. And so essentially how that other person will perceive you, energetically speaking, is they're hearing you on a, a vibrational level. They're hearing what you're saying. They're feeling what you're saying. And just like Dr. Emoto's work with water, if the message isn't clear, if, the, if your voice is saying one thing, you're speaking certain words and you're painting certain images, but your vibrational frequency is in contradiction to that because you're coming from a place of scarcity and lack and lack of confidence, or you're basically personifying another version of self, they're hearing what you're saying with your voice, but they're feeling what you're projecting with your vibration, just like the water reacts to the vibration, to the voice. So does the water within that being. So does that being essentially react to what's called a double binding message. You're saying one thing. You're painting one picture of possibility, but the other thing that they're hearing on a, on a vibrational level is a contradiction. And that creates confusion. And you know, when people are confused, what do they do? Nothing. So... The exercise then is to, it's almost like that, that, um, that little thing that you do. I think Marty was talking about this on, on the uh, I can call that before he would go in and do a sales call, he would, he would do a little pep talk to himself, a little sort of script to himself. He would get into that, that vibe of himself and then he would go into the meeting. It was to f adjust the frequency, to get yourself consciously into a certain space where your posture, et cetera, is natural. It's coming, it's not put on. It's coming from the, re the, the awareness of you being that person. And the reason why you can, it, like, it's just like I said before, if you can imagine a pink elephant, you can imagine anything. So you can imagine another version of yourself and connect to it on such a level that it becomes emotional. And we do that, by the way, going to a movie theater. Have you ever cried at a movie theater? Well, what's that all about? All that is, is you reacting to images on a screen, sound, images, ideas that are being projected to you and you are embodying it and all of a sudden you're responding to it with tears and emotion and so forth. So, I mean, we do this all the time, but we're not practicing doing it for ourselves as a law. 
And, and what this call and, you know, the work that I'm hoping to do here with this group is to bring awareness that we are creators. We are co-creative beings, that the power that runs to and through us runs through every single atom and every single electron in every single part of this universe. So everything is talking to everything constantly. So when you project a certain vibration, you're connecting to everything in the universe. And the, and the way the guitar, you know, you strum one guitar and then you have another gu guitar beside it. There's a harmonic resonance, strum one guitar, the other one starts to, to, to okay, play a certain chord, the other one starts to play that chord. That's called harmonic, harmonic resonance. That's the law of vibration. That's how the universe operates. So that all, law of attraction is just sim simply things that are you in harmony with are, are drawn to you. So that, that goes to what's your vibe? So if you can connect to that vibe, even if you have to do it before you pick up the phone, especially when you do that before you pick up the phone or before you go to sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one, before you have a meeting with somebody get into that space of that person who you wish to be perceived as seen as observed as because you are creating every aspect of yourself all the time whatever version of you is showing up is your version you're the one creating that version so just Tune into another channel and create a version of yourself that you want to be perceived as. And then when you, when you personally are connected to that, that's the posturing. Those are the things that are going to come out of you. And so the best version of yourself to connect to is not an artificial one. This is a really important thing that I learned from Bob Proctor. He says there's, there's three lines. There's the A line, there's the B line, and then there's the C line. The A line is where you are currently at, what you're currently aware of. The B line is where you think you can be. Oh, I think I can get platinum. Oh, I think I can get, it's a thinking thing. You have to actually think about it. And then there's the C line. And the C line is what do I really want? Really want. Forget about rank. What about that? What does that look like and feel like if I have all that? It's the life and the lifestyle that you would be living as a consequence of having achieved the success that you're looking to achieve. Connect with that person. Connect with that frequency. Connect with those emotions. Those are real. Those are authentically you. Because it's within you to be that person. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to conceive of that idea. And because you are already in love with that idea, because your frequency just goes through the roof when you connect to that vibe, that is you. That is a strong characterization of the you that God is intending for you to be, you are intending for you to be. So connect to that person, connect to that version of self. Now bring that person to the table. Bring that person to the conversation. Bring that person to the next phone call. And... It's not going to be the, the same person talking and the reaction is going to be different. This is what I'm talking about when you're applying the law. It is not fiction, which is why it's important to really connect to the authentic you. The one that is bigger and bolder than the one that maybe you have been projecting of yourself into the world. Because, you know, the world has a tendency to stifle that. The world has a tendency to kick us, you know, and put us down. But that's... That's not, I don't give you permission to be that way. You can give yourself permission that way to be that way, but not me. I'm going to be that guy who says you are a divine being and you're destined to be divinely great. So I'll keep reminding you of that person and you just keep brushing that off as you go about life. Okay. One last piece, by the way, and, and then maybe just a, a, a Q&A. I, um, I just got back from 10 days of Latin America. We had two really huge events, one in Colombia and one in uh, Peru. Though I think the Colombia event we had, I'm not exactly sure the total count, but I think it was about 350 people in the first event. And then they had, there were just different sessions. So some people come, some people go, but I don't know, all told maybe about 500 through the turnstiles of that day in Colombia. And about the same in Peru, I think was 250 the first session. By the time we had the law of attraction in the evening, there was at least another couple hundred, 250 people in that session. So over the course of the day, somewhere between 250 and three or 400 people 
we're through the turnstiles of that event. And, and I got to tell you something, um, just those two events were law of attraction events. Those were working with two individuals, one in Colombia, one in um, Peru, who basically I just said, you want me to come down here, the conditions. And um, I said 500 people. So they had to go and find a room for 500 people. That was the first thing they had to do. And you think it was scary for them? It wasn't until after the first session was over that Mary from the Peru event said, I think I'm finally able to relax a little bit. <laughs> so it's been a few months of stress for her, but all in the positive way because it's totally, rev you know, just revved up the engine of her business and the business in Peru. Um, I had lunch yesterday with the managing director of Peru, and he says, what you're doing, and you, I can feel it. I can see the bubble. I can see this. This is going to explode. I can, we can feel it. You, they're feeling us. That whole pebble in a pond, the idea of dropping pebbles in a pond, and it creates a, a frequency, a vibrational frequency that is felt across the ocean. That's what's going on, guys. This is the reality of the law of attraction. It's, it's actually being experienced by people on an individual level as well as a group level. So we're having an effect on them. They're having an effect on us. Perfect. And, and then they wanted me to cover the whole active wellness tour because they want to now generate their version through Latin America. So I did those presentations in both cities. But I just want to say that one of the things that was really touching for me was, um, and re a reminder, was the... Um, Recognition evening in Colombia after that um, day of, of activities, that, that evening went on for hours. I think we were there four or five hours of recognition. They had lots to recognize, and they were recognizing people who had achieved advancement in rank in the first quarter. A lot of these were high pins, uh, golds, platinums. Of course, there were silvers, lots of them golds, platinum, diamonds, and even three royal diamonds. And, and a lot of that is, of course, because they had tremendous momentum going into January, and then with the switch in the compensation plan, that just brought everything within reach for them. And then like popcorn, pow, 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 things just compounded. So it was really, but that's not the point. The point is, yeah, that's what it's going to look like. I see that's our future in North America and in Europe. That's sort of a window into the future because that's what it looks like with this comp plan and momentum. But um, what I saw was the value of recognition. Now, they, they just had a few minutes on stage. They received flowers, every one of them. And... Nice stage background and photographs. It was a photo op. And some of the recognition were moments, opportunities to invite members of the family. So they were hidden. And then all of a sudden, the two young kids of the, of the parents would walk into the room and then they would come up on stage. And it was very touching and very emotional because they were sharing this moment with family because it's such a huge component. You don't get to be a diamond or a royal diamond without sacrifice. And, and the people who are part, paying part of the price of your ticket to be there are members of your family. And so to hear some of these kids and see how emotional they were for their family, for their mother or for their father, and, and, and how proud they are that those times that, you know, they had to give up, et cetera, to see the achievement, it was so touching. It was such an experience. I, I was just like glowing from ear to ear. I couldn't believe how emotionally connected – I was to this, and, it's, and it reminded me of something about Niken. Not that we don't know this, but it reminded me in such a big way who we are. That's who we are. We are a family. Uh, we are people who go above and beyond the call of normal, above and beyond um, discipline, above and beyond duty, above and beyond caring. I mean, it's just, this is a group of people who are so compassionate and so considerate that when you give them the slightest bit of encouragement through recognition, um, they want to earn it. 
and they they'll go that extra mile and so i just was reminded of how critical it is to recognize people in a world where the only form of recognition most people are accustomed to is negative recognition you know you're getting criticized for something or other that's recognition but it's a very negative recognition so as a business building tool but not just an artificial one I want you guys to start invoking the law of attraction in a new way. I want you to look for opportunities to recognize your team, people on your team, achievements on your team, uh, recognition for the extra mile, the, the effort that people are putting in. Like, let's really go out of our way culturally to embody this, that, that we recognize and honor the, 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 the efforts that people are putting in and the, and the achievements that people are making because it is more, it, it was just so obvious to me that this meant more to them and their family than the money, than the pin, than the, it was like, it was like they did, they, they, they climbed Mount Everest and it's not that Mount Everest had not been climbed before. That's not the point. It was that they did it and everything that it took for them to be able to do it is what sort of all came out in this moment of acknowledgement. And I just, I just was so touched by this and I realized how powerful recognition is as a driving force for a volunteer army, which is what we are. So look for opportunities to recognize people on your team. Look for opportunities to recognize people in your life. Um, it is maybe one of the best things we could possibly give to somebody and it costs us nothing. And if, if you're going to hand out a, a bouquet of flowers, really that's not much. But, the, but the, the fact that you took the time to make that happen is going to go a long way where somebody's concerned. So just keep that in mind that one of the rewards of our business one of the most important rewards of our business is recognition and i think we can do a much better job of it and so i'm going to have this conversation with some of my contemporaries and we're going to discuss what we can do to to really showcase the efforts that this group is making and especially those who start you know going through those incentives you know it's not enough to just get a little facebook post we need to do more for that so uh, it was it was quite an impression, and I and I saw that that's one one of the big things that drives this team. The the activities that they're doing on a, on a on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis, those team events that that uh, Veronica was talking about and that that um, Alejandro was talking about in Orlando, those are recognition opportunities. They're not just trainings; they're recognition moments. So, if uh, if you're going to implement the rhythm of the business, which I strongly encourage you to do. Make certain that every opportunity is an opportunity for recognition. So, um, we got maybe a minute or two. Any uh, questions or comments? I'd just like to comment on recognition. When I first started, Dave Stoltz was, used to come here about four times a year with Mary McClellan. He had, he had recognition boards, little ribbons. You must remember, I think the ribbons were Nikan ribbons, yellow ribbons, red ribbons, green ribbons. And it was kind of interesting, you know, the it, it, people, and we used to give certificates. Mary McClellan was very good at that. So we did that here regionally, and people have them hanging. They still have them. So they, they are important. When I went platinum, I got this great big glass thing that I brought back. 21 clubs, we used to get those little trophies. So it, and Mont Blanc pins for the Entrepreneurs Club before. They used to be the 21 clubs. So those things are important. You know what? I, I think it's huge. And, and you just gave me an idea. Um, maybe that's something we can, we can look at through Life and Balance tools and maybe have a, a complement of things that you can just order or download something. Something that gives you a, a, a way to acknowledge and recognize those things that we've identified. So if you've got some ideas, by the way, other than the obvious, which I think we've definitely got to recognize the obvious, um, you know, be, be creative about it. Send me a note and definitely start implementing. Like, don't wait for us to do it. Do it. One last comment. 
Okay, well, this is, this is terrific. We've had uh, a lot to talk about today, and um, I just want to say how grateful I am to be uh, working with you. Um, I, this is my first real team experience in Nikan. It's hard to believe, but it's true. I mean, I, I was part of Team Diamond and creation of Team Diamond, but in a lot of ways that, that was a very dysfunctional team. Um, what I have now is, is people who are grassroots, who are real, authentic, and, um, and we're all in it together because we all see the value of this, this collaboration. And I think that's so critical. Uh, th for me, anyway, this, this phase of life, this phase of the journey for me, Ken, is so, so much more rewarding because of it. So, Michael, authenticity was the other word that Peter used. You have to have it. I recorded that, so I'll send it to you so that, that uh, you two can dialogue. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's well, let's get, let's be, let's be very authentic in our, in our, in our um, exemplary um, projection of that higher self, that, that, that person that we are waiting to show the world uh, that light to shine. And let's get some people on board. Let's get some newbies on board and let them see that this is safe. This place is real. It's safe. And, uh, and let's help them win some recognition. How about that, huh? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. And we will see you next week. Thank you, Mike.